Yeah, anyway, so we have our start section set up with our movement, and I'm gonna do something cool. So right now, we if someone was to come into our script, they wouldn't understand what was going on with this. Like, they would sort of understand that there was some vectors going on, but I'm gonna add some a box around it to make it so that we can actually tell our new people what is actually happening. So if I click and hold control, I can create a group around these objects. Now I can name the group, and I'm gonna name this move. And then I can add a comment as well. So I can say, um, let's put the comment as moves the ship around around using the horizontal and vertical axes. Okay, cool. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do boundary. So as you may have noticed, when I was uh, moving my player around, he went off the edge and he just stopped and just disappeared. That's because we have a boundary set up already with a destroy by boundary, but we haven't made sure that our player can't go into that boundary. So let's actually do that now. The first thing you need to do is we need to create a rect uh, variable. So a rect is basically a 2D rectangle that we can have a min and a max for. So I'm gonna create my rect by calling it boundary and then I'm gonna set the type to be rect. And there we have it, we have our rect. Now I've already got some values set up, so I'm gonna do minus four on the, no, no, minus six on the x, sorry, minus four on the y, and then 12 on the width and 12 on the height. The next thing I'm gonna do is I need to get my rigid body's position to make sure I can check if he's going off the edge. So I'll right click, I'll go player, and then rigid body, and then I'll get my position. So get position. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to get my um, I need to get the rect so I can access those values that I put in. So I'm going to create my variable by going add unit, and then go to variables, and then object, and then get get boundary, and then I'm going to make it so I can actually see everything in this rect. So I'll drag it out, and I'll search for rect, and then go into the rect menu and do expose rect. Now it's not static, so I'm going to get rid of that so we don't have that extra one at the bottom. And the key ones we're going to look at are the x min, the y min, the x max, and the y max. So the next thing we need to do is we need to expose the position here, the vector free. So we can drag it out, and we can go to vector free, expose vector free. Now again, it's not a static, so we'll get rid of all the static functions. And then we have our x, y, z, and we have our x min and our x max and our y min and our y max. The next thing we need to do is we need to clamp it. So clamping means that we won't go below or above the values that we have set. So I can create a clamp uh, node by right clicking, add unit, and then searching clamp. And there we have a mathf clamp and with a value of min and max. So we'll start with the x, so we do the x is the value, and then the min is the x min, and the max is the x max. Now again, I'll add the same unit again by going to math, and then going to clamp. And then we'll have the, the Z because the Y isn't actually our movement forwards, the Z is. And then we'll have the Y min as the Y min and Y max as the max. Now we need to put this into a new vector free to put it back into our position. So we'll right click, add a unit and we'll search vector. And then we have vector free. And then we'll create a new vector free like we did before and put the values as X and the value as Z. Now the final thing we need to do is we need to set the position. So we've got the position before, so we'll set it the same way. So we'll add a unit, player, rigid body, and then set position. Now we can just drag the position into it. And the final thing we need to do is attach the logic. So we'll attach the logic from the last one to the new one. I'll just move this a bit more down so we have a bit, you can see the line. And then if I was to press play now, it should hopefully move us to the edge of the screen, but not allow us to go off the screen. So there we have it. We can't move off the screen. We can't move too far down. We can't move too far up. We have this 12 by 12 box. And obviously I can't shoot back yet, so we still need to add that. So yeah, it's a pretty quick way of adding our boundaries to our game. So the final thing we need to do on our movement thing is to add in our tilt. So at the moment, when we're moving back and forth, it doesn't really look very snazzy. It looks very boring. We're not really adding much 
sort of motion to our uh, vehicle is just sort of floating everywhere and we kind of want to add some more uh, sort of m movement to our ship so but actually before that I need to do the same grouping as I did before so I'll grab the group and go over it and then we have the group set up and we'll set this one as boundary and as before I can always set my comment so I'll set the comment as stops the player moving off the screen. So this is really useful for helping people understand what you're doing with each part of your script. And I really love this tool within uh, Bolt. It's really uh, intuitive to use and really nice and sort of helps with the user interface. So I'm gonna change some colors around as well, which is pretty cool. So I'll grab both of them and I'm gonna make one red and one orange. There we go. Okay, and the last thing we're gonna do is that tilt. So as before, I need to create a new variable. So this variable, I'm just going to call it tilt angle. And I'm going to add it into my variable list. And I'm going to set the type to be a float again. And I'm going to set the angle to be minus 30. Because I want to turn it 30 degrees away from the direction, uh, towards the direction it's going. So it will sort of tilt towards. So at the, uh, it will look like this. Uh, if I was to rotate it on the Z, it will sort of tilt if we're going left. And then I can move my uh, person left like that, and then come back in and go right the same sort of direction but opposite. So we have our tilt variable. Uh, let's add that into our graph. So as before, I've, as I've been doing, doing with each variable, I'll right click, add a unit, and then go to variables, object, and then finally get tilt angle. I'll also need to check if my velocity is moving on the horizontal axis. So our horizontal axis is uh, X because we're moving left and right on the x-axis. So we'll go add unit, player, rigid body, and then we want to get velocity. But we don't want velocity on everything, but we just want it on the x. So we'll drag that out, and then we'll go to the vector free, and then we just want to get the x. So there we have it, we have just the x available for us. Now, we're going to multiply these two values together so that we have the value going in the right direction. So we'll drag it out, drag out the variable and do a multiply. And then we'll drag it in the X and the tilt angle. And then the other thing we need to do is we need to put it into a quaternium. So quaternions are a big subject. If you want to learn more about quaternions, I would recommend Googling it. Try not to get yourself too deep into them because they are quite crazy. But we're gonna use an Euler angle uh, for our quaternium. But wait, that's the wrong one, sorry. Uh, we want to use the Euler X, Y, Z. And then we want to only rotate onto our Z axis. Now, finally, we need to apply this rotation. So we'll do right click, add unit, rigid body. And then we want to uh, set the rotation. So we set rotation and then drag in the Euler angle into our rotation. And then finally, as we've been doing with each one, we need to drag the logic to continue. So we'll drag it in, and now we can have a look at it playing. So, it should hopefully tilt. Oh, it toots a bit too far. So what we can actually do is we can pause the game. We can have a look at the object variable and maybe lower it down a bit, to like 10. And then it should look a bit better. Cool. So the only problem with the variables is it doesn't save on play, so we'll actually have to reset that again. The only things that do save on play is when you're actually doing the graph editing. So for instance, if I wanted to maybe change it so that this is uh, divide instead of multiply, I could just play the game. And if I was to pause it and then actually edit the script now, so I'll go add a unit and I'll do division. So divide and we'll do the X and the variable, and then we'll add that to our Z. So you will see that the multiplier is now grayed out because we're not using that one anymore. And if I unpause, doesn't do anything because it's not really setting the right sort of angle because we're dividing. But if I unpause, you'll see it goes back. So we can actually play around with the programming while we're playing. So now I'll, I'll set this as a group again. So I'll drag it out. 
And actually I'll set two groups. So I'll set the first group as this, and I will name this uh, tilt. And then the second group will set all of these as being our uh, movement. So if I drag it out, and then movement. Now the cool thing with setting up these groups as well is that if I wanted to move all of these at the same time, I could just grab the group and move it. If I want to just change the boundary position, I can drag that one and move it. So it makes it like sort of keeping your, your strips a bit tidier, easier by just like using the whole uh, group system. So the next thing we're going to go on to is the input for shooting. But yeah, as uh, Matt has said before, there is the Bolt Asset Store uh, link is available in our description at the moment, so you can have a look at that.